Today, we will talk about Cauchy problem for the wave equation in one spatial dimension. We will also derive the Lambert formula solving this problem. So what is the Cauchy problem for the wave equation? So we have the wave equation and the Cauchy problem is to find a solution u of x of t x and t of this equation satisfying initial conditions u of x of 0 is equal to some given function f of x and the time derivative of u at time equals 0 should be equal to some given function g of x. So the Cauchy problem is to find a solution for the unknown u of this equation satisfying the initial condition such that at t equals 0 the function is equal a given function f of x and its, its time derivative at t equals 0 is equal to a given function uh, g of x and one wants to find this solution for all x between minus infinity and plus infinity and for all t greater than zero so this is Cauchy problem for the equation wave So today we will derive a formula for such a solution, which is called D'Alembert formula. So how we do this? We start from this, that we know that the most general solution for this equation is given in terms of two functions, f and capital F and capital G, corresponding to backward wave and forward wave so that's what we know that's the general source now we want to find a solution that satisfy condition one and condition two so let us see what does it mean condition one for the general solution condition one tells us that the function capital f and capital g should satisfy this equation. So let's call it condition one prime. And now if we just take time derivative and evaluate it at zero, we'll see that u t of x at time equals zero is equal to c f prime of x minus c g prime of x, right? And according to the condition 2, this is supposed to be equal g of x. This is a differential equation for, for, for functions capital F and capital G, but we can integrate it easily, obtaining one over c integral from zero to x g of s ds plus perhaps a constant okay so the condition one and two for our solution imply conditions on functions capital F and capital G. And now adding these two equations together, one prime to two prime and divided by two, we get that function f of x must be equal to one half 
f of x plus 1 half 2c integral from 0 to x g of s ds plus 1 half of capital C. So this by adding y prime to 2 to prime. And then I, if we just uh, subtract y, uh, 2 prime from 1 prime, then we get 2 g of x equals something, which when we divide by 2, is just g of x is 1 half of f of x negative 1 half of 0x g of s ds negative 1 half of c. So our initial conditions imply that the functions capital F and capital G standing in general solution must be like this. So now the solution satisfying these conditions and these conditions necessarily must be of this form with functions f and g as here. So therefore, the solution satisfying our Cauchy problem must be necessarily as instead of x in f we have to put x plus c x plus c t so it will be f of x plus c t plus one over two c zero instead of x x plus c t g of s ds plus one half of this constant plus now g of x minus c t so everywhere where x stays here, we have to put x minus ct. Okay, so we see that these two terms cancel. This constant is not important at all. And now we have to do some cosmetics with this term. This term is an integral from 0 to x minus ct. We know that we can just replace it by integral from x minus ct to 0 by changing the sign. So we can write that this particular term is equal plus 1 half to c of x minus ct to 0 g of s ds. But now the integral from x minus ct to 0 of gs ds plus integral from 0 to x plus ct gs ds is simply just integral from x minus ct to x plus ct gs ds. So therefore, if we just uh, make some order in the terms that we produced, we will get that our solution which we started with the general one and we then imposed the conditions one and two given by our Cauchy problem. So now our solution necessarily must satisfy this equation. Divided by two plus integral x minus ct to x plus ct g of s ds. Okay, so this formula is necessary for u of x and t to solve our Cauchy problem. Is this also sufficient? Yes, because if we just put t equal 0, then you will see that u of x of 0 is f of x and also when we just calculate the time derivative of this u of x t with respect to t and put t equals zero we will observe that the value of this function at zero is g of x 
Therefore, this gives a unique solution for the Cauchy problem. And this formula was obtained by D'Alembert and is called D'Alembert formula for the Cauchy problem of the wave equation in one spatial dimension. So this is the solution of the Cauchy problem. If you want that u of x0 be f of x and the time derivative of unknown u at 0 be g of x, then the solution of the wave equation is unique and given by this formula. Let us make examples to show the usefulness of this formula. So consider the wave equation with the Cauchy problem given by quite complicated function and okay so let us consider the following Cauchy problem that's the that's our wave equation so this constant c is equal to 1 and the initial conditions is that the function u at time equal 0 must be like this and its time derivative at time equal 0 must be like that let me show you what is the situation here so here is our x t plane here is the value of the function u, okay, and what we know is that at t equals zero, which is just at this at this plane, our function u of x at t equals zero is such that if here is minus one, here is one. So the, and here is 1, the function u of x0 looks like this. Okay, so let me write it with the red color. So that's how our function u of x0 looks like. At t equals 0, it looks like this. And you want to find a solution for this equation uh, with this initial value curve in UXY, U, UXT space. And moreover, we want that the time derivative of this function, this red function at t equals 0, must be given by this function. Okay. So you want to see how this thing evolves evolves when time goes. Maybe like this, maybe it goes, I don't know. One has to find this solution. Okay. The question which I am trying to consider in this example is number one, find the value of the solution of this Cauchy problem at point x equal to 1 and t equal 1 half. So that's the question, what is this? And the second point I want to ask here is discuss regularity of this Cauchy problem. Okay, so that's what I want to do here.
So, how to calculate this? Of course, one has to use the Lambert formula that gives the solution for such problems. Okay, so let's try to apply the Lambert formula. So here is our function f of x, and here is our function g of x, right? So by the Lambert formula, u of 1, 1 half is equal 1 half of f of x, which is 1, plus c, which is 1, t, which is 1 half, plus f of x, which is 1, minus c, which is 1, t, which is 1 half. So that's the first part of the D'Alembert formula. Just applied this. And now we have to add this term here, which is one half. And now integral from x minus ct, which is this, which is one half, to x plus ct, which is this, which is three half, from g of s ds. Okay. So f of three halves, which stays here, is three halves is in this interval, so it is zero. So it is one half. 0, f of 1 half, 1 half is in this interval, so it is 1, so the value is 1 minus 1 half, and now plus 1 half, the function g of s is non-zero only in the interval minus 1 plus 1. So the contribution to this integral is given only from something which goes from 1 half here up to 1 here, because everything which is above 1 has value 0. So it is the same as integral from 1 half to 1 from g of s, which is then 1, ds. Okay. So then the value here is, here was 1 half, so it is 1 fourth plus one half and now it is one minus one half so it is one fourth to one fourth which is equal to one half okay so by d'alembert formula we answer this question establishing that the value of our solution solving our Cauchy problem at point x equal 1 and t equal 1 half is equal to 1 half, okay? So the next thing is to discuss regularity of the solution of our initial value problem for this wave equation. And here is the plot of the initial function. So we see that this initial function is not differentiable in x equal minus 1, in x equal 1, and in x equal 0. So if the solution of our initial value problem is irregular, it will be irregular along characteristics emanating from the point x equal minus 1, x equal 1, and x equal 0. So if you just plot now the tx plane, here is x equal 0, here is x equal minus 1, 
and here is x equal 1. And now we know that the characteristics of this equation is just, are just x plus ct, so which is x plus t equal constant, and x minus t equal constant. So the characteristics that pass through these three points look like this. This one. So if our solution is irregular at some points at xt plane, it will be irregular at most at the values of x and t that lie on these lines that I just have plotted. So let's see at our point 1, 1 half. So our point 1, 1 half stays here. So in particular, our solution is precisely in the region that is off these lines. So in this point, in this point, the solution is very regular. And actually the solution is regular in all the areas except perhaps along these lines, which are just characteristics. Because our initial data is not differentiable at point x equal minus 1, x equal 0, and x equal 1, the solution given by the D'Alembert formula for our initial value problem is therefore generalized solution because it may have singularities at points xt which are on the characteristics emanating from the points x equal minus 1, x equal 0 and x equal 1.